Once I saw a YouTube video with a young guy who picked a fight with an old guy, and then the old guy beat him up. My name is Paul Psolka, Ivy Masters Learning Center at IvyMasters.com, and today we're going to look at test three, section one, numbers nine and ten, and we've got a character in the story who's kind of like that young guy. Number nine reads, as presented in a passage, Miss Corbel is best described as what? And if you notice, this is paired with number 10. So we can go to the line references for number 10 and investigate. And Miss Corbel's description actually starts, we're not only going to look at the lines, we're going to look at other places where we get a hint of Miss Corbel's description. 32, we see right here. Before she had time to think of what her next move might be, it's talking about Lady Carlotta, who's the main character of the story. She, Lady Carlotta, was confronted with an imposingly attired lady who seemed to be taking a prolonged mental inventory of her clothes and looks. So what's imposingly mean? It's like impressively. So I imagine as we read on, we find that she's rich. She's got this like big dress with this big hat and she's very done up. So imposingly attired. Sounds, to some people it might sound intimidating. And <clears throat> then we go on. Now answer choice A here. How provoking, said Mrs. Corbel. These railroad companies are so careless. So it's just saying, she's just saying railroad companies are careless. Do we have anything that matches railroad companies being careless or what she thinks of others? Maybe she puts a blame on others and um, we don't get anything that matches that. So, <clears throat> we go back and we get a little bit more of Miss Corbel's personality. You know, it's not a line of reference, but we can get it here. During drive to the Corbel Mansion, Lady Carlotta was impressively introduced to the nature of the charge that had been thrust upon her. So the charge, this is what you're supposed to do, Lady Carlotta, at this point in the passage, is posing as a nanny, who she is not. And she actually, she's got um, some guts, like she's got some balls to put a cloak, to make a colloquial expression, which means common everyday language, a word that's used in this passage as well. Um, she gets in this woman's car, the stranger's car, and drives to uh, her mansion, making pretend that she is a, uh, her, her kid's nanny. Governess is the big old word that's used in this passage. But notice, Lady Carlotta was impressively introduced to the nature of the charge of It sounds like Miss Corbel is trying to impress her with her kids, and you get a description, you get a description of her kids there. Okay. <clears throat> and then we read on, let's go to answer choice B. I wish them not only to be taught said Miss Corbel, but interested in what they learn. In their history lessons, for instance, you must try to make them feel that they are being introduced to the life stories of men and women who really lived, not merely committing a mass of names and dates to memory. So, it sounds here, notice the caps for taught, interested, and, um, and even the language itself must, you must try to, blah, 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 blah. So it sounds like she's really demanding. Now, we do get some answer choices that match that, but notice each answer choice is two parts. And so we don't get that specifically. We only get one part of it there. So what do we do? We go to the next line. <clears throat> French, well, actually, in between French, of course, I shall expect you to talk at mealtimes several days a week. So again, it sounds like Miss Corbel is pretty demanding of Lady Carlotta. How does Lady Carlotta retort? I shall talk French four days of the week and Russian the remaining three. Russian, my dear Miss Hope, no one in the house speaks or understands Russian. That will not embarrass me in the least, said Lady Carlotta coldly. So in other words, it's kind of like she's saying, I won't be embarrassed by your inability to talk Russian or your children's inability to talk Russian. Miss Quarbold, to use a colloquial expression, was knocked off her perch. 
So in other words, she colloquial is common everyday language. Knocked off her perch, what does that mean? She was taken back, she couldn't believe that what she heard. And let's see her response here. She was one of those perfectly self-assured individuals, so she comes across very confidently, who are magnificent and autocratic. What's autocratic? Well, you might know auto means um, like self, like an autocracy would be a rule by a tyrant, someone who has absolute power. power. So she's like, she's in control, she's got absolute power, as long as they are not seriously opposed. The least show of unexpected resistance goes a long way towards rendering them cowed and apologetic. So if she is defied, if she is challenged, then she winds up being cowed and apologetic. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, or really, she might be humiliated. And then it actually goes on when the new governess failed to express wondering admiration at the large newly purchased and expensive car and <clears throat> lightly alluded to the superior advantages of one or two makes which she had just been put on the market. So it sounds like this whole time Lady uh, Miss Corbel is trying to impress Lady Carlotta and Lady Carlotta's like, oh, but did you hear about, you know, I know you've got the uh, Porsche 911, but it's a 2020, and did you hear about that Porsche 911 with turbo 2021? Oh, that's so much better of a car. So she's saying something like that. Of course, this is a long time ago, so I don't have Porsche 911. Okay, the discomfiture of her patroness became almost abject. So she is, uh, she's almost depressed. She's kind of humiliated from, um, Miss uh, Lady Carlotta's comments. So anyway, what's the best match here? If we look at the answer choices, superficially kind but actually selfish. I mean, she's picking her up from the train station, taking her to her home. It sounds like she's going to feed her and stuff like that. Um, there's no nothing that we've read that would suggest that she's selfish. Outwardly imposing but e easily defined. That actually looks like a great answer. So. If she's imposing, you know, she looks very impressive, but she's easily defined. It's very easy to challenge her. Notice, Lady Carlotta just challenges her, and she just kind of, like, curls up in a little ball. Answer choice C, socially successful but irrationally bitter. So, I guess maybe you say she's socially successful. It sounds like she's rich, but irrationally bitter. We don't get anything like that. Answer choice D, naturally generous but frequently imprudent. So if she's imprudent and she doesn't plan carefully um, or she makes poor decisions, there's no suggestion for imprudence. So the correct answer here is B. And what does it best match? It best matches D. Because this has the piece where she's self-assured, she's very confident, magnificent, autocratic. She's like ruling the roosts, telling everyone else what to do. But then she winds up cat and apologetic when Lady Carlotta challenges her. So the correct answer for number 10 is D. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You can share it with someone who has trouble with these paired questions. If there's any question you'd like to answer from any official PSA tier, SA tier, ACT, leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to shoot a video on it. And click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Have a great day.